D. P. 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 The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! Hey, so Jesse did not know that you got new artwork in your room. Uh, you studio. know, this this is uh it's it's not my home studio. Mm. I am still in Las Vegas, Nevada, United States, because uh, COVID is a thing. And uh, so we the reason I'm still here is because we were supposed to come back on Sunday and to reenter the country up until March 1st. You need a PCR test tomorrow because because our trip was so short. Uh, we did our test like a, a day ago because that's when we landed and it takes 24 to 48 hours to get our test results back. So we didn't get them by the time our flight was. So we had to push back our flight by like 12 hours and then our COVID test results came in. So now we can get on a plane and come back to Toronto, Canada. Right. Yeah. So again, those rules end when? <laughs> Literally like eight hours from now that's when great. we could have just got a rapid test at a walgreens and had our results in 15 minutes but because <laughs> we landed here two days earlier we had to do the pcr so. did, did i see on your twitter that you have to upload this show on the planes internet so i think because we're going to record this and then i'm going to edit it and then hop on the plane and come back to toronto and i'll land i don't know seven or eight p.m eastern but in the meantime i'm going to pay the thirty dollars for air canada's wi-fi and try and upload the play uh, upload the show jesse there. wait till you get home <laughs> just wait till you get home. no Why charge not? it back to the company man charge it back to the company let's do charge it. it no no it's got nothing to do with the money it won't it literally will not get there you'll you'll fly from vegas to toronto and that thing will be maybe 30% uploaded. That's, that's, I got to try. We got to try. Big's the Steve. File? Steve. How big is the file? Uh, this file, probably like four gigs. That's it? Yeah. I can, because yeah. I, when I work from my laptop, I can compress the files, get them a little smaller than when I'm doing like the 4K uploads on the big iMac. You got, yeah. you got a shot. See? You got a shot. I, okay. I got to say, I uploaded the show from the plane. That's I think we say. try. At yeah. least we try. I mean, Jesse, you, you recorded a show from your car last week. Yeah. I, think, I think it only makes sense that this week we try to upload it from the plane. This is the Next worst mile week, high train. club ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, a train. I like that. Not what I, like I envisioned. That. Hey, uh, local zoo employee here. Did you know that flamingos are not born pink and they get their color from their diet? It's from no. all the uh, crustaceans that they eat, like shrimp. There. Really? Now you know. Oh. Yes. Yes. Very nice artwork. Way to educate, Jesse. I would like to uh, start off the show with some news. Yes. Have you ever heard of Coach Mike Babcock? Oh, God. Uh, oh, no. Uh, yeah. Almost um, almost Oilers coach Mike Babcock? I, allegedly. I allegedly. I'm allegedly, kidding. Allegedly. Okay, we don't know that. It's uh, Jay, Jay Woodcroft, by the way, was the right choice. Yes. Uh, Mike Babcock, coach of the Saskatchewan Huskies, just lost game three of a best of three. Oh. In the first round. They blew... <laughs> ah! Oh, that sucks. <laughs> they blew a lead with 13 minutes to go in the third period. Oh, uh, you know, but how did it build character? Adam? <laughs> oh, jeez. You know, Man. you lose this so that you you win later, you know? Uh, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Unless you graduate. Um, so, yeah, Mike Babcock, best no, of the Loses it in the uh, deciding game. <laughs> oh, that sucks. I hope, like, post-game, he wasn't – he didn't just default to his old NHL. Well, you know, he's got a long time to play in this league. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm, meanwhile, I, I, half the team is in their fourth year. Oh, I searched guys. far and wide for post-game quotes, and I saw nothing. I got him. Um, oh, you got him? How the I got him right here. How did you find them? You're a mutant. You're a quick, mutant. Quick Google. Quick Googles. Quick maths. Okay. All right. Well, this right is, quick uh, Google sucks. <laughs> Mike Babcock uh, post game after the four three four three loss. Okay. Our lack of depth, our lack of of depth, really was exposed here in this series. I thought we played really well in game one and game two. I didn't think we were as good today in game three. That's from the That's Bruins the series. You can't fool me. <laughs> he said that. He said that after the Bruins series in nineteen <sighs> and eighteen. 
He was talking about depth. You're, are you serious? Are you sure that's a quote from from yesterday? This is for he's he's got some more. I can keep going. Get out. Keep going. So keep Babcock, Babcock reflected on his season coaching U Sports Hockey again and said he's going to need some time to think about a potential return. I've got to see my wife. He said she's the boss and I'll go talk to her and then we'll kind of decide where to go next. And at this stage of my life, I'm in no hurry to make any decisions. So there we go. Those are a couple quotes from the game. See, that's either, I mean, you could look at it as a shot at the players, but I mean, the sub, the, 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 the context could be that not that he was taking shots at players. It could be that, uh, they were down players because they were hurt. And I only say that, uh, just to play devil's advocate. Cause I don't know much about the Saskatchewan Huskies. Right. Well, either way, um, Best of luck to the Huskies next season. Unfortunate uh, last game collapse. We don't know anything about that. No. Um, okay, so important news uh, uh, out of the KHL today. Dynamo or Dynamo Riga has Dynamo. withdrawn from the KHL completely. Yes. They- so, so there's a, an important difference here. There's a Dynamo Riga who they're out of the league. They said we're gone. Jokerit in Finland has just pulled out of the playoffs. That's, That's right. Done. Yeah. Right. And they've released uh, Jokerit is interesting. They've released every player that's asked for a release that won't play in the KHL next season. So any player that's like, I can't play in a Russian hockey league or a Russian back hockey league, uh, they've granted them the release. And I believe when you need a release um, in the KHL, part of the problem that a lot of players face when they try to come over to North America or they try to go somewhere else is they have to pay back some of the money that they were that they were paid. Like you have to buy yourself out of your contract. And I don't know the specifics of it, but I do know that like, I'm pretty sure Leo Komarov had to pay like significant money to his KHL team to get out of his contract. Um, and Jokic, yeah. I think waived all those fees or whatever the rules are. They've, they've kind of done that. I, you have to think with Riga pulling out, you know, there's, there's Jokic, which is a storied franchise. You have to wonder if they're considering it. Uh, yes. Well, cause they left the Finnish league to join the KHL. So yeah. who knows? They, they could be going back to, uh, to, man. I've always, they, I've they always, could be going back. I've always wondered if you could do something akin to, and I know they sort of do this already, but if you could join the Swiss, the Swedish, uh, the Czech and the Finnish league, could you not have a possible contender for second best league in the world? Like you why? Could, like a like why a Champions you, League. Yeah, and like why couldn't they you sort like, of have it? But uh, yeah, do uh, they sort not of. have a Champions League? Like yeah, sort of. But sort like of. I feel like if we have like more of a, um, I know they have a Champions League, but like if it was an actual league where they played each other, and obviously your your division is your country, and then you or if you can anyway, if you can support that many teams, and then outside of that you can do like interdivisional play. Like I'm not saying it would be exactly like the NHL, but if you could bring more of those leagues together. I'm I'm sure they're starting to think about that because, you know, for a long time, the KHL backed by the ruble has been the place where if you're not playing in the NHL, that's where you can make the most money. But with the ruble falling the way it has uh, with restrictions on air flight uh, with all the other things that are happening. I mean, we could see this change very quickly. The Russian uh, stock market fell 45% on day one of the invasion, 45%. And the ruble is in terrible shape. It's in tatters. It's less Mar- than a penny, less than an American al- penny. Yeah. And markets can always rebound. Uh, but there are runs on banks happening right now in Russia. Uh, you feel terrible for obviously uh, the Ukrainian people. You also feel bad for the Russian people who have no control in this. And it does have business ramifications. And I was like, like, oh, tell me this guys. Jesse, you're the head of the Swiss League. Steve, you're ahead of the, the Swedish League, and I'm the head of the Finnish League. Does it right. not make more sense for us to just unite and, be, and become – like, there's more money in it. Sponsors are happy. Sponsors are get right on board with that. You know, I think, frankly, given the situation, if you're a, a Bauer or, a, um, or any sort of local sponsor or any, you know, massive hockey sponsor or overall, like MasterCard or whatever – wouldn't you be much happier spending your money with political situations like what those countries have to offer? Switzerland, Sweden, Finland, and, and Czech. All right. Yeah, I, I, think, I think those leagues are generally self-sufficient. Like, they do fine. Like, I don't, I don't think there's this desperation. Certainly, to... but why wouldn't you want to make more? All right. Could you <laughs> you could, right? Better. Yeah. better talent? 
And Adam, you would be better at answering this question than I think Steve or I, but like in terms of the geography and the travel times, like all those places are really close in Europe that it wouldn't really make a difference, Finland. right? Finland, you can spit at, at Sweden, right? It's that close. It's right beside each other. And then uh, and then I think like, I mean, think about it. If, if what's, you know, um, would be a 45 minute flight to an hour flight. Like, honestly, if you're if you're in Riga, if you're uh, in like, Riga's Latvia, but if you're in um, Czech, if you're uh, in Switzerland, you can be there in no time. And it doesn't cost much either. Yeah. Right. Like, what are the flights in, in Europe, like city to city? Like, like nothing's as far bucks? as Montreal to L.A. Like, that's probably nothing. the fur- furthest trip in, yeah. in uh, the NHL. Right? There, it would be there akin are... to like Tampa to Toronto. Yeah, there are there are road trips within the KHL that are longer than the longest NHL road trip, but they all involve Russia and Mm -hmm. you take them out of the equation. Yeah, it's far, far closer. Right. Which means it's conceivable like they could get this done if they wanted one big league. Yeah, you could do something like what the Canadian Hockey League has, and they just all play their own separate seasons. And then there's the Memorial Cup where the winner of Switzerland and the winner of whatever, and the winner of whatever, they fight, and there's a random, in order for it to be exactly like uh, the Canadian Hockey League, there has to be a random host team that doesn't really deserve to be there. Right, which yes. is stupid to me. I don't know why they do that. All or they just have, do four leagues. Here's what you do. <laughs> here's what you do. If you want to make a perfect hockey league in Europe right now, what you do is you combine those leagues, and there's interdivisional play during the regular season. I think you can't just do, well we play in Finland, we play in Sweden and, and then only four teams make it to the champions league or whatever. I think you do an, a full league. And then I think you do, um, you seed people for the playoffs, which are a one, you know, one and done March madness style tournament. So you bring in like 32 teams and then you seed them. And so, so basically every team could make it right. So let's say mm-hmm. you have 32 teams total. Every team can make it. And you could have a team that's total garbage, make it to the second or third round. And you have people betting on that, which gets uh, advertisers excited. You have fans like that who, you know, the, one of the things about the NHL that I, I genuinely think sucks is that, you know, in January, there are a lot of teams that just know they're not going to make the playoffs. So as a fan, like, remember when we were watching the Leafs in the 14-15 season with Horchak, it was so depressing watching it. But if we knew at the end of it, hey, listen, this group of guys could still surprise some people in, in, a, in a one and done, that'd be kind of exciting, wouldn't it? It, it definitely would. Um, I mean, you'd have to go up against the top team, but it would be kind of fun. Right. Yeah. It's, I don't know how I'm, many teams there are. I'm looking up the, uh, the Champions League that currently mm-hmm. exists for hockey to make sure like the idea we're coming up with isn't already what the champions League <laughs> is exactly doing. what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and it says here, it's a total of 32 teams from different European first tier leagues uh, participate in the 21, 22 champions hockey league. Uh, besides the continental cup champions, 24 teams from the six founding leagues, as well as the national champions of Norway, Denmark, France, Belarus, Great Britain, Poland, and Ukraine can qualify. Hmm. Wow. So it's it's pretty expansive, 32. That's huge. Yeah. So maybe the question should be, should we be making a bigger deal of that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I you know what still I mean? Think, I still think the whole point of the conversation is not, obviously, like if we could make a big deal of it, we would. But I'm thinking that business minds in Europe right now in those leagues need to be thinking, how do we supplant the KHL? How do we make this bigger? Well, and it's it's crazy, like, Adam, like you're coming up with like really fun ideas that usually I'd just be I'd be so game for and I'd and I'd be right on board. But I'm I'm looking at the KHL website right now and they have games scheduled for tomorrow. And I'm like, in what bizarro alternate reality are these games taking place? So I don't know if you guys have seen this. I follow KHL English. Yeah, um, their and, Twitter account. Yeah, so their Twitter accounts like, who do you think will win? Is it Moscow or is it St. Petersburg? And they're and everybody's like Ukraine. Yeah, no, oh, well, they're, like, they're getting ratioed on every tweet. They had oh, like wow. a fun meme kind of account, like that took shots at NHL teams and oh, check out the attitude on <laughs> KHL, and uh, <laughs> instantly no one wants to hear any of that shit. Yeah, we're punk uh, rock. Nope, you're not. Nope. There's uh, nothing less punk rock than invading Ukraine. 
yeah. for no good reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's such a strange, like I'm so, I'm so distracted and confused by it. And up until the moment it actually happened, I didn't think it was going to happen. The, the IOC is kicking out Russia and Ukraine. Uh, sorry. No, they're not. They're kicking they're out Russia and uh, Belarus. Belarus. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the IOC fourth is and 12th doing that. ranked countries in the IOC. In right. the entire and world. they're not kicking them out. They have to ask the governing bodies of each individual sport to not allow Russian athletes and Belarusian athletes to compete. Yeah, but th- these uh, the countries that are asking for it are using their power to basically be like, well, it's us or them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they'll just leave like a you, country like Finland. They'll just leave. Did Sweden, you see the, just the decision? Uh, no, but I assume it was corrupt and bullshit. All it was, was it was like the same. It's like Russian athlete from Russia like that. You can't, you're now going to be called the union of Russians that, or, or something. That's what their team is going to be called. You can't Sweden, keep getting away with it. Yeah, S- Sweden, <laughs> Poland. And I think Czech all said, no, uh, we're just not going to play them. Yeah. Now FIFA said, them. is anything going on in the world? Uh, we're just here to play soccer. Guys, sports aren't political, except when they're always political. Um, it's so, you know, the thing, the problem that they have, guys, is that FIFA specifically, a, a lot of the growth of, of the just obscene dollar amounts that that organization is taking in and soccer as a whole is coming from Russia. It's oil money. Big, big, big oil money. And, you know, you saw uh, Roman Abramovich, uh, you know, hand over control of uh, Chelsea uh, a couple days ago to, I think it's the board, the charitable board that runs it. Uh, And when they released their statement, they're like, what's going on in the Ukraine is is terrible and we hope it stops. No mention of Russia, no mention of any. So this guy is voluntarily giving it up, but I apparently... Um, the UK government is still considering kind of stepping in and taking it back. And I think a lot of what you're going to see is in, in sports is there's going to be a very interesting thing because sports are driven by money. Um, and they're in a lot of cases driven by Russian money. I think, uh, a lot of the, uh, stadiums are, or some of the stadiums are Russian sponsored, Russian, uh, Russian built. And I think it will be curious to see how far these governments, especially the UK and the U S who, have seen their real estate, have seen their uh, their economies uh, kind of be funded by Russian money. Like it, a lot of, I don't know if you guys watch this show, it's really stupid, but I love the show called Million Dollar Listing because it's just obnoxiously oh my expensive God. houses. Obnoxiously expensive houses. Yeah, it, and, Million Dollar Listing. It's just about a bunch of normal size houses in Oshawa and Curtis, Ontario. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's what it is here. <laughs> But in New York and L.A., they, they talk about these these real estate agents who are internationally connected. Talk about, well, listen, we got to we got to work. This is um, uh, this is this apartment's 20 million. So we're not advertising to local New Yorkers. We're advertising to Russians. And that's where they hide their money. And so like they'll be like, well, we got it in the Russian newspapers. Well, we got it on a Russian website. And so it'd be very, very interesting. And they say this on the show. Oh, yeah. Well, they don't say that that's where they that's where they put it, but that's what's wrong, Steve. Well, nothing's wrong. Just question from the class. Sure. How the fuck is that allowed? Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to ask. So like, this is just who voted show? for that? So here's what happens. Here's what, what happens. What? Who does that represent? <sighs> that you guys. What the know fuck? That? What this are we doing so, here? It seems so shady. Just on, oh, it is. On the so surface. this is what happens. So what, what Russia is, it's called a kleptocracy. What happened when the Soviet Union fell is the United States didn't really have a, a, a coherent, succinct foreign policy for the Soviet Union because they had been at loggerheads for so long that the United States didn't want to be like, well, like a total about face about, you know, we're friends with Russia now and we've been enemies with them for 50 years, but now we're friends and we don't know what to do. And so what happened was they put a lot of the Soviet Union assets up for sale at like bargain basement prices. These guys came in, a lot of the guys that you still see now, they came in, they purchase it at nothing. So all the oil, all the weapons, all the shit that they, you know, all the bad stuff that happened after the fall of the Soviet Union. Democracy wasn't really able to be established under the under Yeltsin and, and the other person who was the actual legitimate uh, president as well. And so what these guys have done now, now that they've accumulated obnoxious, crazy wealth is they go and they put it in countries where it's safe. 
right? Good governments, good courts, um, great uh, you know track record of law and stable economies. So you've got North America because I would include Toronto in this because Toronto is the same thing. It's 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 a lot of it's driven by Chinese money in Toronto, yep. uh, but but Russian money as well. New York and L.A. and London, big time oligarch money. And you see it also from the uh, uh, from some of the oil money in the Middle East as well. And so it's a place to take your money and then make it safe. Because if the ruble falls apart, right. well, my money's in American dollars now. Everyone knows you die eventually, right? Like you yeah. can't spend all this money. Mm -hmm. Like you die eventually. It's what are you doing? for money's sake, Steve. What you, Jesus. That's like what that's, a, that's an addiction. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm vastly simplifying this and I'm sure somebody with a history degree is going to take me to task on, on the comments, but I encourage you to look oh, at Adam, it. there's already 40 comments yelling. I at know, you. I know. I'm just giving you a basic outline. Whenever yeah. people comment that they're like, well, it's just so, st he doesn't know this small point. I'm like, no, I didn't study it, but I got to have a baseline understanding what's going on here. Long no, story short, no, no. on this hockey podcast, they're you're, they're going to get the deepest rundown of it. Right? Yeah, no, and they're all from Trump <laughs> Train Susan nine six four nine six eight 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 three two four. Definitely real flag, flag Canada, flag United States. Trudeau is yeah. a dictator. Um, <laughs> and uh, anyway, long story short, so what's going to happen now is the UK and the US are going to see a lot of pressure to clean up the laws that allow this, which is, it's essentially money, money laundering. It's just converting your currency into a currency that you know is more stable. The ruble has not been stable. It's been up and down and that sort of thing. So, um, so you know, these guys who own these, these teams that sponsor Formula One teams, uh, that get their sons to be Formula One drivers somehow, some way, it's all going to, it's going to be very interesting to see how this changes. And I'm telling you, it's a huge opportunity for European hockey. Not that they don't have a built-in fan base, but my question would be, it's such a fucking great game. So much of Europe is, you know, under snow for a lot of, a lot of the year, just like we are here. Why wouldn't you want to grow it? Why wouldn't you want to attract bigger names? If you can't get, um, you're not going to get maybe Austin Matthews, but maybe you'll get a player like a Tim Stapleton who left the NHL, was a pretty good player in the NHL, went over and was like obnoxiously good in the KHL. Well, um, so, so, so it's interesting you bring him up and like North American players, Canadian players, uh, American players. Yeah. Um, I believe it was 32 thoughts. I heard them talking about like some players, they, they want to leave yeah. other players because of their financial situation. They're like, I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay and I'm going to play. So they were staying for the money because they needed it like to provide for them, their families, et cetera, et cetera. Now the money isn't there. The well, ruble's not worth, worth anything. It's not worth anything. It's yeah. paper. It's not worth the paper it's printed on. So what, what the hell are any of them going to do? My question, Steve would be, are they contractually paid in American dollars? I don't think that's the case. Okay. To my knowledge, KHL contracts are paid in rubles. I also know you can wipe your ass with KHL contracts. Um, like, I mean, you can put whatever currency you want in a paper bag. Um, you know, right. it doesn't really matter. They don't have a reputation for paying on time. They don't have a reputation for paying what you're owed. And this isn't my own personal vendetta against them. They're literally, they literally have a reputation of being dishonest sacks of shit uh, when it comes to paying their players. You can listen to any podcast that's ever been recorded ever uh, with players who have played there. And the only ones who aren't willing to speak on that are the ones who still play there. Um, right. Bad league run by bad people. Get out. Get out well, as soon as you can. And this is my thing, right? Like there is a lot of money in hockey internationally. Mm -hmm. This is your chance to start a real European league that that like how did the KHL even come to be the secondary league? The money, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, here's your way to do it. And it's the way to do it legitimately. Uh, the owners of these franchises can can make some significant money. The player salaries go up. It's good for everybody. Yeah, and boys, like I know there's I know there's KHL players who listen to this. Like I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. Potentially a whole team. Like boys, like I I hope I hope it goes well for you because uh, like I I can't imagine the situation right now. The the financial oh, situation, the yeah. the stress situation. 
I, I hope it works out for you because you worked your whole life to, to get to this point to play in the alleged, you know, second, um, second team, uh, second uh, highest ranked league in the world. What happened? What's happening to you isn't fair. And fuck, I wish you nothing but the best. Yeah. No kidding. For, for all the hockey players out there in the world, like who, who are just shy of playing in the NHL, there should be a better option for them in another part of the world. Like that's all we're really asking for, you know, it's just a more legitimate league for all of these hockey players. Cause so many people around the world play about hockey, play, uh, care about hockey, but they're not all going to be NHLers. We're just asking right. for a better run league. So we, they can go and they can make a, make a living for their families and for themselves and play there consistently and know that the money's always going to be there and that they aren't running the shady deals that you're talking about, Steve. So and yeah, I, just hopefully very one much day that like, league can exist. I would very much like to an easier way to watch those games too, yeah. right? Like you can watch KHL pretty easily. There's a streaming app that has KHL rights, but I would really like to like, you know, I, I know we'll get amazing messages. Every time I ask a question on the show, people like show up on my DMs big time and it's amazing. And it's like, well, how do I watch a European hockey club? How do I even get involved? How do I get, how do, how can I watch Zurich where Mitch Marner almost signed? Remember that? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I think that's where Austin Matthews played. <laughs> the Zurich Lions. All right. Um, how, I forget, how would I, I forgot about that. Matthews actually played there. I forgot he did. About that. Yeah, yeah, I like, forgot that too. Him and his mom like just moved there for the year. That was yeah. cool. It was such a, in retrospect, that's such a smart thing to do. Go play made with him, men. He made a million dollars too. Yeah. Yeah. He made more money for Zurich than he did in the NHL in his first year, except mm-hmm. for the bonuses. I mean, like he did well. He did 18 years old, million bucks. Yeah. Okay. It's great. He gets to live abroad. Yes. You know? oh. It was funny at the time, by the way, and this is just a total aside, but there were so many CHL people who were like, you know, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> you know, yeah, I just wouldn't do that. Guys just should, protecting their own interests. I wouldn't do that. Why wouldn't you want to be in a billet somewhere? <laughs> you could be living in someone's basement on a $300 per diem per week. Think, of, think of the possibilities. That? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and by the way. Um, we've heard the same thing with the NCAA too with hockey. It's like, well, it's better in the CHL. The NCAA really rips you off. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, um, we'll gentlemen, it's almost time for spring, which means spring cleaning. You know what I'm talking about, right? Four million men worldwide trust Manscaped, the leaders in below the waist grooming, and get in on our exclusive offer. They sponsor the show, and they're going to sponsor cleanliness. Below the belt for you with an exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com. Use that code DANGLE for 20% off and free shipping. The package, which we know already has the trimmer and the skin safe technology and the 4000K LED light. This package also includes the weed whacker. It's a nose and ear trimmer to whack all the worst of your weeds. And I'm not going to lie to you. I had a a moment the other day with my girlfriend and she said to me, "Um, you probably need to cut your ear hair. Trim your ear hair. I'm 33 years old. It's already happening. But thanks to Man, thanks to Manscaped, I'm not worried about that. Uh, Manscaped even threw in two free gifts: the travel bag and the anti-chafing boxer briefs to keep the boys stored comfortably. So use that promo code Dangle. You got to get in on this. Manscaped.com. Use the code Dangle. 20% off and free shipping. You cannot miss out on this. Let's talk about Athletic Greens. If you're looking to get better gut health, more energy, and a stronger immune system in a really easy, natural way, you got to check out Athletic Greens. I'm sure you'll agree that most of us are not huge fans of having to take a bunch of pills, vitamins, et cetera, in the morning. But with Athletic Greens, you can get rid of all the vitamin pill bottles and finally make some room in your cabinet and do better things for your gut. It's really important. Athletic Greens is an all-in-one solution that actually tastes good, and you'll enjoy getting your daily vitamins. And remember, it's keto, paleo, dairy-free, vegan, and gluten-free. So whatever you eat, however you eat, Athletic Greens can work for you. It contains less than a gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything. It still tastes good. It's really important. Let me just just drive that point home. It tastes really good. You should have Athletic Greens. Use the promo code SDP. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one free year supply of immune boosting vitamin D and five free travel packs for your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash SDP. Again, athleticgreens.com slash SDP. Take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. With that in mind, guys, did you what did you think about the goofy ass hockey game between the Toronto Maple Leafs and Detroit Red Wings on Saturday? Uh, 
How do you watch a peaceful Leafs game? You don't. That doesn't exist. You must know that by now. No, I know. But like I, for me, the cutoff was five. Five goals. You, you got a four goal lead. I'm still antsy because I've seen them choke on that more than once in recent memory. Five is fine. I have seen them choke on that once in my lifetime, but that was a very long time ago. Chris Pronger was still on the blues. That's right. That was a six, six tie. Wasn't it? Uh, no, uh, the Leafs lost in either overtime or the shootout. Okay. There was six, another five. game where they were up like six to one. And then the, I think it was the blues came back and tied them and it was a tie game. And yeah. I remember that was grade seven. Yeah. Yesterday. So yesterday, uh, my family and I actually had Christmas too. Oh, um, okay. Because we couldn't get together for the first Christmas. So we got together. COVID. Yeah. Right. Because of COVID. <laughs> uh, instead of COVID Christmas, we had Christmas too. Like the, the S in Christmas is too. Anyway, it wasn't branded. We didn't have shirts or anything. We didn't have merch. But my uncle comes up to me and he's so excited. Like whenever there's a Goofy Leaf game, which is always, uh, they're so excited to tell me about a similar Goofy Leaf game that they saw. He goes, you know, Steve, because uh, I was like, I've, I've never seen a game like that. Every, you know, decade and a half ago, I started making videos. Of the Leafs had never scored 10 goals. He goes, the first Leaf game I ever went to as a kid, 13 nothing. I said, who who won? He goes, the Leafs. Oh. oh. <laughs> Leafs did. They won 13 nothing. And you know who it was against? I go, who was it, Uncle Dom? His name's Uncle Dom. Who was it, Uncle Dom? Against Detroit. Ha. Well, there was only five other teams that he could have been against. <laughs> be How old do you think Uncle Dom is? <laughs> How dare I, this, you? The six league team wasn't that uh, I, wasn't that long ago. Actually, you know? no, this Here, is I the Dead Wings era. This is the early '80s, Jesse. Oh, this was man, uh, well. So he <laughs> this was he when they were the Gordie Coyotes. Howe, he said Gordy Howe was so embarrassed that he walked off the ice. So this was a game that Gordy Howe allegedly took part in. Oh, okay, maybe it was the six team league. So my bad. Leafs, Red Wings, thirteen, yeah. nothing. Um. Oh my, oh my God. January 2nd, 1971. There you go. 16 teams that would have been there. Yep. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a lot. So they so, were, they were very excited about talking about that at Christmas too. With Saturday. But Steve, uh, thank goodness you do those streams on uh, Saturday night. They're because- all carnivals. It's, it's a lot of fun and you get to watch it back because the game just now exists on YouTube on demand, which is kind Forever. of sweet of Sportsnet to do. Um, mm-hmm. So I watched that Sunday morning and like I thought you would have come in to this game like in your LFR with a different kind of attitude because you nailed how the game was going to go during yep. that first period when they were up. The f- what was it? Four one and then five one and then six one and then seven two and all that stuff. You said, watch out. Because they are pooping themselves, literally. Sure. They are all sick. Half the lineup is out with this illness that they're running through, whatever flu they have or the stomach bug. And they're going to fade, and they're going to fade fast throughout this game. And they they stayed on fire for 40 minutes, and then the third period hit, Ooh. and they collapsed. Because whatever was ailing them, the, it hit them. And so do we forgive them for this collapse? Is this not like this is this shouldn't be like every other collapse because there's a direct illness outside factor that went into them throwing away that third period. And you said that was going to happen. And then it happened. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard because uh, like goaltending is the tough one. Four goalies played in this game. All of them were bad. Like yeah. it's it's remarkable. Yeah. Although uh, I have to say, of the four, Peter Morazic was the best one. I Peter Morazic, I thought, allowed one bad goal and eight shots, which is the standard for that game, which is horrifying. But <laughs> I mean, I mean, the ones Campbell allowed, one was deflected for sure. Mm-hmm. Could have been two. First goal was an unbelievable rebound. You can't give up, and then it goes right through him. The and second I think the re- goal. The Wait, second goal. If you're a goaltender, goal was- tend the goal. Yes, uh, and that, but, the, went but right I think through. Steve, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but I think Campbell, I think we know this. He runs on confidence. And I think when he did that, it shook him. He was never the same yeah. after that. It was, yeah. he, he fucked up. And you know, when Jack fucks up, he like, when you hear him in press conferences, his self-talk is terrible. Yeah. He's so bad to himself. And it's like, dude, you were up until, I don't know, December 5th, he was putting up Vesna quality numbers. Yep. Uh, their, their defense stru- structurally has been terrible. So I equate some of his struggles since December 5th to that, 
but you could see it. You could see it in his body language. You could see it on his face through his mask. And that goal messed with his head. And then, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it back to you in a second, they pull him with the lead. Yep. Like, Dude, and he didn't have his hat on when Morazic allowed the first one. Listen, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I'm going to say a few things that are all true. Okay. Uh, Jack Campbell is an amazing goalie. Yep. Jack Campbell is an all-star. Jack Campbell is the starter of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Jack Campbell sure appears to be a great person. The worst goal Jack Campbell allowed in the Montreal series was the first goal of game seven. Hmm. Everyone's going to think this is harsh. You are, you, uh, I, the, the, the more I listen to myself and then the more I listen to the Leafs afterward, the more I'm like, you know what? I think I kind of think like them. Hmm. I do. Did you listen to Sheldon Keefe's comments after the game? Uh, which one specifically? He thought they had a great game. Battled. Mm-hmm. You know, thought they played really well. Now, that could be a coach sticking up for his team uh, because he thinks they need confidence. It could be a coach who's sticking up for his team um, because he knows they were playing sick. Uh, to me, he praised the team, the team, the team. The team, the team, the team. Well, when you give up seven goals and blow a 7-2 lead and you think the team played well, well, who didn't? Yeah. It's the goalie. Yeah. It's the goalie, man. It's the goalie. Can I um, propose? Sorry, go I, ahead. Keep going. No, no. Well, I was, pro- I, I was going to say, like, it, I, I really do think we're – I don't know why the organization would would do this, but I think we're underselling how ill the team potentially was. Probably. Because I think by the second period, to me, it was fairly easy to see who was and wasn't battling something. Uh, I saw Justin Hall, and I thought he was okay. He had two assists Uh, in the first 10 minutes. He was amazing. Yeah. Uh, Marner, Bunting, Matthews. They Crazy. looked healthy, and it's oh, not yeah. just because of the points. It's the way they were skating. Kasha looked fine. Um, Kampf looked fine. Mikheyev looked like he was sh- struggling. I know he scored what ended up being the game-winning goal. Uh, Tavares looked like he was struggling. Nylander left the bench, for God's sake. At, right um, after he scored, the his amazing slap shot coming off the off the rush. That was so Crazy. good. Left he went to shot. the back, which I, I assume he went to the washroom. Like that's what happened after he scored a goal. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't really remember a thing. Any defenseman did. Let me ask you this. Ilya Labushkin. Let me ask you this. Yeah. You know, people, uh, people have gotten on me for this and I get it. I, you know, you walk away from a game like that to me with the sickness and the fact that certain NHL games, there's 82 of them for each team are going to be goofy. They're going to go goofy. Do we just chalk that up to there's not a whole lot we could deduce from that game. It's just a goofy game. It happens in the NHL. We fire a rubber disc 100 miles an hour, one side of the ice and the other. And occasionally 17 goals are going to go in. It's rare. It's fun. I, I got to be honest with you. That game had me up and then really down and then really up again at the end. Isn't that the point? I had fun. I enjoyed oh, that. I definitely had fun, but it's killing me that, uh, like I'm I, <laughs> I have to give my live reaction on these streams, oh, and yeah. almost every Saturday is the height of ridiculousness. Yeah, they I can't lost. imagine the chat as soon as those <laughs> you know goal three, four, and five go in. They oh, lost seven yeah. one to the Penguins second Saturday of the season. They blew a four one lead to Chicago and ended up winning. They blew a four one lead to Colorado and lost, and like. Like and it's also just the way that it goes. David Camp somehow wins that game that they blew the four yeah. one lead in. Like the most dramatic person to a to who could have scored that goal did. Um, the the anticipation for the Leafs versus Avalanche for me personally because of me versus producer Drew. Of course it went that way. Kerfoot scores because of course he did, and the Leafs had the four one lead and they blow it because of course they did, and then. Drew uh, Drew wins in the end because the Avalanche win. <laughs> the game where Sid Sixero was on for two periods. They blew a 3-1 lead and then were losing and then they ended up winning that one. This one is 10 to holy shitting 7. 
Um, they had another game against Detroit, the least, the less dramatic of the Detroit games. This was also on a Saturday night. All the games have listened so far, are only Saturdays. Leafs uh, overcame a 3 1 lead against Detroit. I think they scored six unanswered goals to win it. That was the game where Bertuzzi blocked those two shots for nothing. Mm. Uh, and I'm probably missing some. Yeah. Ah, like they're all <laughs> I'm on camera for the entirety of that. And like, it's fun and as a it's, viewer. It's I love fun. watching that. on Saturday. Yeah, Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, Steve, I'm with Jesse. I think yeah. more of this. That's yeah. the for all of you. You know what, though? Can I be honest with you? When when the old timers I'm, I'm talking to you, Ken Reed, and I love you. <laughs> the old Why are we calling out Ken? We're calling out no, Ken. no, 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 fuck Ken. You, Adam's right. No, no, this is what I'm. This is a compliment to Ken. Ken always Ken. talks about what's the best era in hockey for Ken. It's the '80s. Mm -hmm. What happened in the '80s? Goals. Nobody stopped a fucking puck. Nobody. Oh, it was the, it was always eight to six. What's wrong with are, that? I like that. I'm not going to say old people, but folks who are older than us <laughs> were the only ones who I saw. They were like, "That was great." <laughs> yeah. It's all us who are stressed out. They're like, "No, that was good." Yeah, I got, to, that, answer, nostalgic. to answer your original question in terms of taking things away from the game, I it's hard for me to take not take away the Jack Campbell part. It's hard for me to look at that game and be like, Jack Campbell's fine. He could have been I, sick too. If he he could have been, though. but if you look at the numbers, he hasn't been consistent for a while. And like early on, I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt for the COVID schedule because of how on and off the Leafs have been uh, yep. through mm -hmm. December through January, where they hardly played any games. And it's like how a could second he get it? Season how could he get into a rhythm, you know? But, like, even since the All-Star break, have we seen really good Jack Campbell consistently? No, and I think if you're going to be concerned, it can't be because of the Detroit game. It had to be mm. the stuff leading up to the Detroit game because he could be sick. But uh, I'm with Detroit you, Jesse. Game, the numbers are concerning. The Agreed. Detroit game, I'm willing, I, I could be convinced to write it off because I feel like what wasn't the game he had before this good? I think it was. I don't remember who it was against because there's so many games. He was, for as much as he struggled this season, he was so unusually bad Right in the Detroit game. The goals were so uncharacteristic. Um, and, you know, not everyone wants to say into a microphone they were on the verge of shitting their pants all game. You know, uh, <laughs> Jonathan Bernier, in a game where the Leafs beat the Red Wings 6 nothing. Uh, just a couple years ago, he made like 40 saves or something in a game where, again, he was on the verge of shitting his pants all game because he came in relief because someone got hurt. Jimmy Howard? I don't remember uh, who it was. Um, but let's let's all remember, it's unusual he did well. We were surprised he did well. We all thought the final score was going to be 12 nothing. <laughs> right? Can it's I give unusual. you the Campbell splits? Uh, go for it. Okay. This is the athletic did uh, their Monday leaf report. They did a great job with this. So first 20 games, Campbell 12, four and one, nine 46, three just shutouts, a, just a mutant last 20 games, 11, four and three. Great record. Eight 93. <laughs> Almost identical. Record. <laughs> Since January 1st. There's 33 goalies with at least 10 starts since January 1st. Campbell has the third worst save percentage. In I can't believe it's not worse. Who's worse? 8 887. Uh, the two behind him, uh, Nedeljkovic. Of He's the Red terrible, <laughs> by the way. And uh, New Jersey's John Gillies. Oh, so, well, that's not that's, even fair. Those John the, Gillies, poor John right. Gillies. Those yeah. are the only two goalies with a worse save percentage since Jan 1 than Jack Campbell. Let me let yeah. me say this. Those are not, those are real numbers. As an aside, I think we all owe Don Waddell an apology about Nadelkovich, at least right now. <laughs> what the fuck do we know? Man, um, oh man. Oh, yeah. You got a third? Yeah. Good for you. Holy yeah. moly. Good thing yeah, that's a two year deal. We're sorry. Um, yeah, yeah sorry we're, we're sorry, Don yeah, Waddell, who usually sorry. makes good moves. Um, I think the other thing is, yeah, you know what? It's sorry, tough... Tulski. Let's this be is... honest. Yeah, okay. Sorry. This is the toughest skid we've seen with J the Jack Campbell Toronto Maple Leafs, right? Uh -huh. It's it's uh -huh. usually been winning. Streaks happen. Things happen. I'm not concerned that he can't get it back on trap forever. There's, 
They're still winning. That's the crazy thing. That's the thing. But, you know, eventually that does catch up with you, you think, unless the Leafs can outscore their problems, which I would argue they probably already, always should have. Winning 10-7 um, is the definition of outscoring your problem. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't have a problem. I'm going to run away from it. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> the insurance gonna, marker to make it 9-7 was shorthanded. <laughs> I'm not going to therapy. I'm going to party. Um, ah. <laughs> so I think, I think at the end of the day, um, I, I'm going to chalk this up. I, and Jesse... I'm with you on Jack Campbell's stats post December 5th. Like, I think if you're worried about Jack Campbell, the Detroit game can't be the thing you're worried about. He could have been sick. I think you got to write it off personally, but um, they do have to figure something out here. And it brings me into my, my next conversation guys, because here's the problem with the Toronto Maple Leafs, right? You got a whole bunch of things in the air. There are people who believe the Toronto Maple Leafs need to get a defenseman. Yep. There are people who are against the Toronto Maple Leafs getting a defense because it's a while you've always got defensemen and you're still stuck on defense. Why not double down on what you're good at? Get a power forward. Sure. Get Michael Bunting too. Um, Or, or, and then you've got the new emergent crowd who are like, okay, so Mrazek is heart attack hockey. And Steve, I think you said it perfectly last week when you said he makes one or two incredible saves a game that he created. Um, yep. he's, he's so good at fixing problems he created. <laughs> That's what it is, right? But he, he has been stable when he's been healthy. And the problem with Mrazic is sometimes he's not. He's Jack your Campbell ideal Campbell. like television protagonist. Yes. And then... He fixes problems he created. So you've got... Fun to watch. Portions of the fan base. I think the goaltending one's the smallest. Portions of the fan base who are like, hey, we need a goalie. Another portion, I think the biggest one. Hey, we need a defenseman. And then the growing contingent, which is we need a power forward. And here is the one that is a real gumming up the works, to quote my grandfather. The Toronto Maple Leafs, through Elliot Friedman, basically said on Saturday night that if Jake Muzzin is healthy, they are not going to hold him back from the play uh, until the playoffs. They're not going to couture off him. And to be honest with you, I looked at that and said, and maybe I'm wrong here, but but I feel like you gotta sometimes you gotta work smart, not hard. Hold him out, get the LTIR space. Because if he is healthy, you can't bring in a big contract. What? I, what, Steve? I hear you, Kyle. Yeah, no. We won't sportsmanship hold him. and all that shit. So is he? Yeah, so no, is he, no, he's right. He's so right, guys. A, <laughs> if he's healthy, he's coming back. <laughs> That's a really good point. If you can't yeah. see Steve right now, he's given up. He's given the uh, the uh, one division wink right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, he's 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 got to respect the integrity of the game. No. Like <laughs> Kyle say, because Kyle on, Vegas say, and all that shit. He couldn't say the other thing. Like what he's not it? he's not allowed to say the other side of it. Where oh no, if he's healthy, we'll leave him out. He can't say that. Yeah, Vlad yeah, Guerrero no, did not earn abiding, a spot on this team. <laughs> he's abiding by the the oldest saying in sports: if you're not playing fairly, you're not trying. Right. You know, Adam. I, also, let's I appreciate it. great reference, Adam. Thank you. Vladdy didn't earn a spot. No. <laughs> no, but ten games in, he did. Steve, yeah. Jesse, I don't know how. How did that happen? How did that happen? So no, weird that no. his contract slides another year at that point. No, it's so weird. stupid. Super, super weird. Service you know that time. Story, no, Steve? I've never heard of service time at all. You know that story, Steve? <laughs> uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Yeah. yeah. So for in the way Major League Baseball is set up, um, if you're a young superstar player like Vlad Guerrero was going to be, even though he sort of struggled a little bit in his first season, um, if you play X amount of days at the MLB level, and I forget what the days amount is, you qualify for your contract to be a UFA earlier. A one but year earlier. One yeah. year earlier. But if the team holds you in the minors for 10 days, yeah. another year is added to the years of control. So Vlad didn't make the team. <laughs> and then 10 days later, they were like, shit, we need them. <laughs> we need them. And they brought him up, and so they have another full year of control. Yeah, but Adam, these executives, they don't have a crystal ball. You know, like they gotta <laughs> they gotta do what's best for the player. So you know. <laughs> so I think that's what's happening with Muzzin, Adam. Like, as much faith as you have in Dubas's words, like don't take them at face value. Oh, I hope he's lying. I want him to lie. <laughs> Dubas, please lie. Please lie. Do not do not do this. Do not don't let him play. Let him heal. And all, it's better for the team. Let yeah, go heal. spend the money at, at yeah. uh, trade deadline. Go, go blow another it. first round pick. Who cares anyway? You're a great drafter. 
Yeah. How I I okay. Here's a narrative that I uh, I hate more and more every day. That um, at the and I, this is this is I disagree with me from May because this is me in February and I know more than me from May. It's just true. I got to live from May to now. Mm. Uh, I hate the narrative that. If this season ends in a first round exit, they got to blow up the core four. And even more so, I hate that if the Leafs lose in the first round, it'll cost Kyle Dubas his job. Because I don't think it will. Again, last year at the deadline, I said over and over again, well, shit, if this team doesn't get it done, I don't know what I would have done differently because they were playing great. Need a little bit of defensive depth. There you go. Need a guy who can score some goals and play tough on the wing. There you go. You know, need a little bit of goalie uh, insurance. There you go. And here's a leader, too. Here's, yeah, he went out and he got everything. And they were up 3-1. And I'm like, he did it. He did it. I I love you, Kyle. Congratulations. And they lost for, because why? Because why? Well, the injury, (laughs) no, get Guys, they were still up 3-1 with all those factors convincingly, and they still lost. This year, his job is exponentially harder. Exponentially harder. They they need a, a, an upgrade at all three positions while having a better record and fewer resources. <laughs> what the f- – like, no team is in this position. No – <laughs> the 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 road in front of the Leafs makes no sense whatsoever. Acting a fool, and nailed it. They're they're, they're great and utterly doomed. <laughs> like, how Fulhamin's, by the way, been on a t- he's been on a tear, and he's not a hot take guy. It's just he says it like it is, and you're like, holy smokes, he nailed it. That's exactly how I feel. Yeah, their their offense is lethal and the best in the league and also unpredictable from the top line down. Uh, they are, or that is to say, below the top line. Their defense is just roll of the dice and their goaltending is Dungeons and Dragons roll of the dice. <laughs> How do you, like, we made fun of Ken Holland for uh his quotes uh i think it was at last year's trade deadline where he wasn't willing to over commit in terms of buying at the deadline because he spent so much the previous year i kind of think that's the right move here um you built this team you did the best you could um and holy look at them look at them he hit some homers too he hit some homers good, good deals and look where they are. There's what top five, top six. Yeah. Look where they like the, are. The bunting deal alone is crazy. How do you lose Zach Hyman and find a better replacement? For, who's younger yeah. and LBR. cheaper for two years. Yeah. Yeah. And like just so I love bunting so much more offensively than what Hyman brought. I think like the defense that Hyman uh provided was a little better than uh than bunting, like his PK especially, but like offensively, you can't complain about that top line. And, I've, and to I've be been honest, saying this. Sorry, go ahead. Um, no, no, no. Well, go ahead. Uh I've been saying this for months, and it's been true the entire time. And it's wild that it's true the entire time. The Leafs are fifth in the NHL. In points percentage, fifth out of 32. In their division, they are third of eight. (laughs) 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 Ah, The playoffs start today. They play Tampa. (laughs) Like, what do you do? What? No team in the league has a situation more volatile, harder to predict than the Toronto Maple Leafs. Who? 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 Homst. Nobody. Not a single team. What the? F- like I'm. I. I am trying more and more as I get older to be like, what would I do? And last year, I looked at Dubas and I was like, well, shit. Mm-hmm. I got no notes. Good for you. Mm-hmm. You know, 
And I tried to remember that when I was really mad at the team and wanted to curse them out after they lost. I tried to remember all the things I said about, well, damn, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing. And this year, it's, it's the number one thing I get asked. What do you think I was asked at Christmas, too? They know I work at Sportsnet. They, they know I got my YouTube channel. They're, what would you do? I, I, don't what? I don't know. Yeah. Leave a comment. Leave a wrong comment down below what you would do. <laughs> You're all wrong. It's nothing personal. I'm wrong, too. Yeah. Do it like, do Dubas just, do Dubas and Pridham just walk into the office every day and giggle? like giggle at each other like oh, no, no, no. and then shanahan walks in the room and they get all quiet and shanahan looks at them and he goes <laughs> and then they all just laugh over coffee and look at the marker board for two hours and then leave without doing anything yep what do you Maybe. what would you do with this team see if you answered a question on saturday from someone who had a suggestion on what you could do with the team and they said trade john tavares uh no what they said was <laughs> yes it was when, no what they and said you was, answered when it does that very seriously happen okay when does, no no because i it's not the first time i've received that question okay and there is a hundred percent a world where they trade him um there is probably less than a one percent world where that happens now uh i i could see it happening I can see it happening. It's not going to happen for at least a couple of years. The contract is designed for it to eventually happen. Let's yes. Let's it's all possible. it's let's be honest here. So his current deal where, where a first hell? round exit this playoffs does that move become more realistic this summer? I don't. He's still a point of game player. He, it becomes more realistic. It's still less than twenty percent. So, so here's, here's where they're at, by the way. So I can say that for everyone who's like, what the, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> here's the reason it's doable. He's 11 million against the cat. And by the way, trading John Tavares immediately makes the Leafs worse. So let me get that out of the way. But uh, he makes 11 against the cap. In his first two years with the Leafs, he made $15.9 million. Um, for those of you who are not so good at math, that is larger than 11 um 12 million last year this is the first year out of the seven where he makes less than 11 9.35 if the leafs wait till the first day of free agency they can pay his signing bonus of 7 million and 40 thousand then he will only make 910 thousand next season for whichever team acquires him they will be on the hook for the remaining roughly 15 million of his deal. Um, but he'll have a just under $8 million salary. Um, assuming they keep him mm -hmm. uh, for an $11 million cap. It. <clears throat> it's designed to be easier to trade as it goes right. now. Wait, sorry. The, at the big asterisk there, he has a full no move clause the entire time, <laughs> but right. I mean, how often have we seen those waived? Often. Right. Often. I, I well, hate when people go, oh, but he's got... Guys, stop pretending like you just got here. Like, <laughs> that's there. That is the please trade me to where I want to go clause. Okay? That's how it works. Interesting. Well, I don't, I don't think that conversation happens yet. And remember, John Tavares... No. Uh, is, it was really good, and he's just been on a bad, I think, three-week streak. Like, and it's not even that bad. He's just frustrated scoring. I don't think he's... Have you guys been like, man, he's, his play's fallen off. He can't play defense. He's not creating chances. I um, I see chances. Last, last podcast, it's hard for me to remember. It's easier to remember the podcast that we do in person. Yeah, um, of course. Did, did we have the conversation about Tavares and drawing penalties? Uh, or was I that on know. the stream? Yeah, go ahead and talk, to say it quickly anyway. Okay, so the Leafs don't have a ton to complain about penalty wise this season. I mean, there have been some games they didn't get a they didn't get a single power play in a game where they scored ten goals. That was insane. Well, that's the reason uh, why, though. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. No, I, honestly, if the Leafs had to defend leads entirely shorthanded, they'd be fine. Right. Their penalty kill. I've never seen a team so bad at defense, so good on the penalty kill. It's the strangest thing. Anyway, um, 
Bunting is obviously one of the best players in the league at drawing penalties. Um, that's eventually going to dry up because he's been fined twice for embellishment, but it's it hasn't quite dried up yet. Uh, he's been doing good. I don't have a ton to complain about in terms of the Leafs and drawing penalties. John Tavares, though, should 100% draw way more penalties mm-hmm. because he's not the most fleet of foot and he never has been. John Tavares wins the puck in the muck and always has. And the amount he is hooked and held and yanked to the ground and the amount of penalties he actually calls do not correlate. It's, it's not matching. That guy, like, it doesn't – watch him. Watch him next game. The, the, his struggles don't surprise me because uh, he's not as good at getting away from players as others and maybe not even uh, as good as himself a year or two ago. But the amount of infractions that guy has to deal with, while none of them get called, is pretty wild, especially for the captain of a hockey team. If you like socks, you should try these ones, Stance Socks. We're fans. How can you not love them? They're versatile. They're colorful. They make great gifts, too. But did you not hear that Stance is now expanding outside of just the socks game? Now they have full active apparel lines. Their new products include sweatpants, joggers, hoodies, and more. And the best part about it is all of the clothing has stayed true to Stance's unique qualities. So if you've enjoyed the comfort and creativity of Stance in the past, you're not going to believe what Stance has in store for you now. It's not just socks anymore. It's comfort. It's lovely creativity. It's stitched different. Embrace a life of superior comfort and creative expression with everyday apparel that truly is, as I said, stitched different. Check out Stance's super soft line of sweatpants and joggers, shirts, hoodies, hats, and more. Now available in a full range of fits, prints, fabrics, and fun. So check this out. Stance's philosophy is you should never have to sacrifice your own individual style for the sake of comfort, and you don't have to now. Whether you're relaxing around the house, working out at the gym, or running all over the town, Stance now delivers its signature softness and creativity in a full line of active apparel from head to toe. Stance has got you covered. Head on over to stance.com and get 15% off your first purchase. Just use the code TSS at checkout to apply. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with Stance. Stitch different. This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of the most important relationship in your life, the one you have with yourself. Whether it's hitting the gym or making time for a haircut or even trying therapy, you are your own greatest asset. So invest the time and effort into yourself like you do for other people. Here's the thing. I've been going to therapy for years. It's been tremendously helpful. And BetterHelp Online Therapy offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't actually have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. And the best part about it is it's a lot more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. And this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Steve Dangle Podcast listeners, that's you, get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash SDP. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash SDP. Now we're running a little tight on time today. Um, so there's a couple of things that I, I want to hit before we get to the press conference and my last Black History Month profile. Um, so the first thing is just as of now, if you're listening to this show, obviously some things happen in real time. So to you, they've already happened, uh, breaking FIFA and UEFA have suspended all Russian clubs and national teams from com- competitions until further notice. Hey, there um, we go. so finally they've done that. Uh, so I just wanted, I wanted to correct or at least update what we were saying earlier, uh, in the show about FIFA. Uh, they did the right thing. That's great. Um, the second thing I want to mention is, um, uh, do you guys know what special thing happened in the NHL this, this weekend? Uh, an outdoor game. Yeah. Did you know oh, there was yeah. an outdoor game? No yeah, idea what the yeah. score was. No. Who played? Tampa uh, Nashville. That's right. I do know that much. Yeah. Tampa Did you Nashville. see it advertised anywhere? No, I, uh, I can't remember who I said this to, but I go, if you gave me five guesses to get both teams, I'd fail. <laughs> And I cover hockey for a living. My so first wondering- guess was going to be Dallas. My second was going to be Nashville because I remember they talked about it on 31 Thoughts and I remember something about cowboy hats. Uh, but then I would have only have three guesses to guess Tampa and I wouldn't have got there. Right. I remember it because we did the jerseys on the show. Right. Do you right. remember okay. when we did yeah. the special jerseys on the show? I don't remember that. 
member no. content of the show ever. Yeah. No, um, the, the other thing I want to throw out there is that I, I told a friend of mine this weekend, uh, lifelong Leaf fan, grew up in Burlington, uh, that there is an outdoor game between the Leafs and Sabres. And he said, where? In New York. Where in New York? And I said, it's a Tim Hortons field in Hamilton. He said, no. And then he looked it up on his phone because he didn't believe me. So the thing is, locally, these games are being advertised, I think, in Tampa and Nashville, although I don't know how well. I can tell you this. I don't see a lot of it here. And it's the Toronto Maple Leafs. Maybe it's because they don't have to. You know, it's the Toronto Maple Leafs. You don't, maybe you don't have to advertise it. But I still feel like it's good to get the hype machine going, don't you? Yeah, but they didn't they don't need to sell tickets. That's the thing. All the tickets are already gone. Like they were gone before they even like went on sale because there's enough sponsors and season ticket holders that get the pre-sale and all that stuff. So I get that they don't have to hype it to actually sell tickets to the game, but you should hype it for the local community aspect. Like, or to get someone Ham- to watch it. Hamilton having is still an happening. NHL Hamilton having an NHL game is a big deal. Like, I don't know. I think that's kind of cool. And like, yeah, you also want people to tune in to Sportsnet or CBC and that Saturday and watch the game. Like, here's here's what it is. You cannot. What what has changed from the beginning, from the first outdoor games that were to now is you cannot force fans outside of the two fan bases playing to give a single shit about your outdoor game. Yeah, that's true. Sure. Uh, I, with the first outdoor game was Montreal-Edmonton. Everyone I know watched it. Mm-hmm. it Everyone cool. I know. I went to a buddy's house. We all watched it. Jose Tator with the two on his helmet. Isn't that cute? Isn't that funny? We all watched it. And then at some point over the years, we just went, no, that's enough. That's well, because it's not that exciting unless your team's in it. But but still, you would think in Toronto, we would hear about the Toronto Maple Leafs. I think we're all looking forward to when we can go the fuck outside. Um, and then we'll worry about going to a Leaf game. Like, that's everyone's... No, but, but Steve, an outdoor yeah. Leaf game. Yeah. Also, that doesn't make that, sense. That mentality is changing. Like... Uh, the the games are packed already, you know. Yeah, like we're we're the capacity limits are leaving. You mean you mean the weather, Steve? Uh, no, I mean I mean uh, like people still don't know how to handle what's going on, and mm-hmm. you know this is getting lifted, but am I comfortable with that? Or I heard something here, and I heard something there, and also I think there's a factor of uh, people are less stoked on the lease. They I don't are. know why. It's a great team. Mm-hmm. I know great exactly team. why. Why? What's happened the last six years? <laughs> <laughs> They're losers. That's yeah, like, dude. Like, um, <laughs> I don't. It was either CJ or Thirty Two Thoughts was talking about the the home opener from this year, and it was the rece- dead. It was dead. Yeah, or it might have yeah. even been you, Adam. <laughs> yeah, the reception at the home opener. Eh, yeah. Now, I also put that, I stocked that up to people hadn't been in an arena in a while. Didn't know how to handle it. It was a bit weird. I had a friend didn't in the game. I was behave. texting him. They're yeah. like, I don't know what to do with myself. And I think, I think it's, you know, to be honest with you, if you're an American, you're listening to this. I don't think you understand how our government worded COVID. It was doomsday every day, every day. And it's because they wanted people to stay safe and we have a public health care system and we don't want it to collapse. But it wasn't like, you know, you, you got to be safe. It was you will die. If you leave your house and, and there are or people, kill someone or, or or worse, you'll kill an old person. That's how they framed it. And, it, and it's sort of it's it's traumatized people. And it's going to take a while. I agree, Steve, to shake it off. But it doesn't mean you can't run a commercial on TV and say, hey, the Leafs are playing outdoors in Hamilton. Isn't that cool? Right. I, I, I'm on Sportsnet. And this weekend, yeah. uh, being in Vegas, there was there's no mass restrictions here. Uh, I was at the the Jet, uh, Jets, the Golden Knights, um, Colorado game on Saturday. There's no mass restrictions in there. It's a packed house. Like it was, it's you forget what is happening in Canada real quick. Like as soon as everything's yeah. gone, Steve, I think you'll you'll notice how quickly you slip back into an endemic, you know, and you you won't miss the mass. Like you'll forget about the vaccine restrictions. It's it's real quick a mentality change, and mm-hmm. and I think it'll be a lot easier than you think. You had to be you had I to be so, safe bro. when there was no <laughs> like, when the when the vaccine didn't chance. exist and people didn't have it. Um, you had to be you had to be very careful. 
Um, but the whole point of the vaccine is that we is to get back to this point. I had a friend that left the country, went to Costa Rica for a week and they, they came back and they said the same thing. You forget COVID even exists in other countries. You it, like and, as soon as you land and they tell you, oh, you don't need to wear your mask. And then you try it out for a little bit. You forget. You forget yeah. that it's a thing. I think that that'll happen, Steve. And yeah. it's an outdoor game. Come on. So oh, we, I'm going. Are you going? You have tickets? Uh, <laughs> tickets. <laughs> Are you going with sports that press? Gosh darn! Uh, Are you gonna yep. shoot, you're going to shoot some content. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're going to be an influencer at the game. Yeah, you bet. I'm, I'm hoping to go. I, I might visit the field uh, at some point in the next couple of weeks before the game mm-hmm. for hashtag content. And then, yeah, I'm planning to be at the game as far as I know. That's that's the thing. When you get tickets, you're like, I'm going. When you got a press credential at the last minute, they might be like, No, you're not. that is true very very true we'll see can i uh can i shout out a one dangle navy member who hooked me up with the tickets on saturday night oh yeah please do for vegas for vegas colorado so i didn't have tickets going in i got a d i get a text from adam to tell me to check my dms because somebody's trying to reach out to me and it was a listener named uh hannah who works for alliant i don't know if you know but you've ever heard of alliant they uh they have the stadium here for the las vegas raiders so like it's alliant stadium they're a small airline company and they have a box there they have a uh an advertisement on the ice and everything and she's like we have an extra pair of tickets we have a box every day every uh game and we hand out tickets to a bunch of our clients and everything we have two extras she dms me i get to go sit in the box and it, it's a fantastic time in that arena like shout out hannah for for letting me uh for giving me those tickets for me and my girlfriend and the pregame ceremony in vegas you guys it's better than anything i've ever seen they really? start off there's a concert outside the stadium first of all they have a they have a stage built right outside the arena outside of t-mobile where they have just blasting dubstep music that that just blares for like an hour and a half before the game so th- then they're having that j- the concert stops they have uh all of the um the vegas girls they're like cheerleaders they come up a- in a parade with a bunch of drummers playing behind them and they have a I saw parade that photo of the, you they have a parade to the stadium where with Come all of on. their, with all of the Vegas girls and the mascot, he leads it and he rides a ship. He rides this little ship and he drives everybody to the stadium and you get in and then you sit down in your seats. They have the warm up skates. Everybody, everybody's there for warm up, uh, trying to bang on the glass and all that stuff. Warm up stops. They bring out two knights. One night's the golden night. One night is the opposing team. And they have their sword fight like medieval times at center ice. That's and amazing. Then, and then, I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. You never know who's going to win. But this time the golden night won. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh so they have their fight and then they they do everything they do all the intros they bring out the guys they're they're playing the, the band's playing the whole time and then they drop the puck and each intermission they have uh this thing at the top of the stadium called the fortress where they have a castle and in the castle is the dj and like Every time there's a, a stop and play, there have some sort of uh, entertainment at the at the fortress at the top of the the stadium by the DJ. The in experience, uh, in arena experience at T-Mobile, best hockey experience I've ever had. Unbelievable! That's very cool. I can't yeah. wait to get down. You and guys see it. get down there. Uh, quite an experience. Thank you, Hannah, for hooking me up with that. All right, let's do the press conference. Conference. <laughs> So on Black History Month, this is the last profile I'm doing uh, for Black History Month. I just want to uh, uh, do a, a little short conversation on Jay Sharers. Do you know who Jay Sharers is? No. No. Okay, Jay Sharers, born in Jamaica, raised in Hope, British Columbia. Canadian former ice hockey linesman, one-time referee in the NHL, war number 57. He was the first black NHL referee ever. He began in the NHL in 1990. He worked the Stanley Cup Finals in 99, 2000, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2011, and 2013. And he did the 2010 Winter Olympics. He wow. officiated over, te- or, sorry, 1,064 games is the exact number. Um, one th- it would have been 1,065 if Mike Babcock hadn't been his coach. Sorry. Um, but uh, it was a, a spectacular, I'm joking about the Babs thing. It, spectacular career and one that I think interestingly in hockey when it comes to Black History Month I've never heard a profile of him outside of this I actually was like looking around at what I what we should do and talk about with with um, with Black History Month on this last one 
I, I found very little on Jay. And that's why this one's going to be a little bit short. And I think this is an important way to leave Black History Month because there's so many stories that need to be told. Um, even in the game of hockey, you know, with its admittedly limited multicultural aspects at the moment in terms of how we've ingratiated ourselves and brought other people into the game. And, um, you know, it has been a predominantly white sport and a predominantly white, right, sorry, white run sport and a predominantly white reft sport. Uh, I'd love to know what Jay's up to. I'd love to know what his experience at the 2010 Winter Olympics was like. That's a story oh. that needs to be told. Jay shares Black History Month. That's how we want to leave it because there's more stories to be told. And I'm sure he's got some great ones. And what happened at the 2010 Winter Olympics, Steve, 12 years ago today? This that I'm pointing at right now, the golden goal. Sidney Crosby, the golden goal. And Canada has once in a lifetime Olympic gold. I was going to say, can you believe it? Uh, that's no. different Wrong goal. goal. Different Wrong goal. goal. Thank Wrong God. Goal. That's, uh, that's my ticket right there. My ticket stub uh, for the printed price on the ticket. And I was in the nosebleeds. The printed price was $550. Wow. Jesus. Uh, I did not pay that. I was there with Nike um, and could not have paid that um because i was 21 um for that game but uh that was a day i'll never forget and it's still probably my biggest flex yeah the other day i die it's my biggest flex i went to the i went to the gold medal game in 2010 yeah that's number one of number one number one of number one until the least when the cop it's the one thing i can tell anybody in this country and they'll all go oh Mm -hmm. that's cool i could tell the richest person in the country that and they'd be like shit <laughs> like you can't you know what i can't buy that experience retroactively <laughs> <laughs> well anyway steve uh uh i i remember i used to call steve jesse when we had the um i was working at rogers at the time at kiss and we had the olympic rights for radio we didn't have them for tv but we had them for radio so because the fan had them so we were oh, allowed yeah. to talk about we weren't talking about the big games we were talking about the olympics and steve was my olympic correspondent in the evening show so he used to call in and he'd literally be in the stands at the game yeah. talking to me going oh here's what's happening right now and i used to do like olympic medal updates and stuff like that and it nice. was it was pretty darn cool i re- i remember i think it was uh when canada beat russia i think it was seven three uh walking out of the building with the crowd and uh the crowd because I told them I was on the radio and they were all feeling good. They started singing the national anthem and you played it on the radio there. I remember there it is. There it is. And by the way, lastly here, um, I'm sorry to interrupt with this again, guys, because we do have to wrap the show. But uh, as of now, Russia has been officially expelled from the 2022 world cup as well. Wow. Yeah. So no matter what happens, they will not play this year. Wow. Huge. Huge. Now, I know that there was qualifying left between Sweden, Poland, and Finland, I want to say. So it'll be between those three teams. Uh, I think it's the top two teams in the division that make it, or three, or whatever it is. Wow. So, wow. yeah, pretty wild. Anyway, just thought we'd leave it at that. Um, so, gentlemen, uh, we will be back Wednesday. It's a two podcast day, two podcasts. Wow. CJ Show, which, by the way, man, it's, it's up. just get. It's heating up, baby. This is CJ season. Get ready. <laughs> Him and Julian are, are just rocking this. Their last show was amazing. So uh, be on the lookout for that today. Uh, let's see if Jesse can get this damn thing uploaded on the airplane ride home. Jesse, <laughs> we miss you. I can't wait to be back in studio with you on ah, Wednesday, man. It's going to be fun. All right. So we will see you Wednesday. Look out for that. And of course, Noxie and Cax, Cassie Campbell. Don't miss that episode. Game over Montreal continues. We love you. We'll see you soon. Flamingos. Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.